Welcome foolish mortals. I grabbed another box to do a little unpacking while I'm rearranging and I wanted to share these with you. These were some of my favorite things as a kid. I was a huge reader when I was younger. Uh, not so much anymore. I find it tires my eyes pretty easily. But these illustrated classic editions, um, I really loved these. I would try and get one every time we went to um, a store. Uh, they used to sell these at Walmart, and uh, KB had them, and a whole bunch of other stores had them. But when I was younger, you know, six and seven, I I loved to read. Whenever we do those Pizza Hut things, if you're from the 80s, you know, Pizza Hut reading challenges or school reading challenges, I would destroy them and just read, like, a book a day if I could, a couple books a day. And these were my entry into a lot of classics, um, I think these would really do with a comeback because kids today don't read a lot of classics, um, because of many reasons. Uh, some of them are found to be, um, not, you know, proper for today's world, but some of them like Journey to the Center of the Earth or Oliver Twist and stuff like that, you could learn things about history and, you know, how people thought in the past. So I wanted to show you these because I found um, a whole bunch of them at a thrift store the other day, and I bought them all. So they're great little books. They aren't 100% um, complete. They, they're they kind of like cliff note versions, but they have illustrations telling you what's going on. And all the books are, you know, a couple hundred pages. They're small pages, though. And I think they're great for kids. So they're all adapted, and the illustrations are wonderful. The covers are great. So first up is A Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. Great book. Great author. Next, another classic author, Charles Dickens. This is Oliver Twist. It's actually kind of using the cover of the people who were in the movie version. But again, good illustrations. And they don't always have the same illustrations. Sometimes they do. But um, they do do different illustrators. This is Anna Sowell, Black Beauty. Great story of a boy and his horse. Last of the Mohicans by James Cooper. Prince and the Pulper. This has been turned into God, I don't know how many different uh, movie versions. There's even a Mickey Mouse version of it. That was by Mark Twain. H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. Not that it wasn't famous in the first place, but probably made more famous by Orson Welles on Halloween in, I believe, 1939. Mark Twain's Tom Sawyer. This is one of the more problematic ones, just because of some language in it. And it depicting kind of what life was really like back then. William Birch and the Mutiny on the Bounty. Another one. All these have been turned into different movie versions. Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. This is a great Disney movie. Live action. A Tale of Two Cities. Charles Dickens. You can see these were at Walmart for 50 cents a piece. Howard Pyle and the Many Adventures of Robin Hood. Jules Verne again, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, another book that got a great Disney uh, adaptation, The Oregon Trail by Francis Parkman, 
Most people know the Oregon Trail because of everybody dying of dysentery along the way. The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. Another Dumas with the uh, Man in the Iron Mask. I think the latest version of this was a Leonardo DiCaprio film in the 90s. H.G. Wells' Time Machine. Excuse me. Hey, <laughs> you! Sorry about that, guys. Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. This just got a recent BBC, I believe, update with uh, David Tennant, who played Doctor Who. It was actually pretty well done. I liked it. Robert Louis Stevens, Treasure Island. And uh, if you haven't seen the Disney version of this, um, it's a great adaptation, and then, of course, there's Muppet Treasure Island, which was even better, and then Treasure Planet was an animated version of this that uh, I think is an overlooked Disney classic. They really did, I really liked it. There was some movement there. Uh, L. Frank Brom, The Wizard of Oz. Everybody knows the story of The Wizard of Oz. But if you read it, it's completely different. Daniel Defoe, The Adventures of Robinson Crusoe. Um, the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. This has been labeled another problematic book. Charles Dickens, David Copperfield. Jack London's Call of the Wild. Another good book. I'm trying to think of when these were done. So these are, most of them were done in 1979, so that makes sense that I would have been reading them when I was, you know, seven, seven and eight. Uh, there's a time machine. I didn't know I had a duplicate of that, so that's cool. Robert Louis Stevenson's The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Another one that's been adapted many, many times. Dumas again with The Three Musketeers. And last is, uh, oh, another copy of The Man in the Iron Mask. I didn't know I had two of those. Cool. So I'm going to be careful when I'm buying stuff. So these are great books, and I've been thinking about maybe reading them as kind of an ASMR thing. Tell me what you think of that down in the comments. I may try one or two and see if anybody cares. I've often been told that um, sometimes my voice can be um, sleep-inducing. So that might be something uh, to get the, the punters to tag in. So tell me what you think of that idea. Again, these are great books. If you can find them, they're great things for kids. I think they've been reprinted as bigger books now. I'm not really sure, but these are what I remember as a kid. And I'm going to try and find more of them. Um, I wonder if there's a... Yeah, there's a list of quite a few in the back. And of course, they kept updating them. There's um, uh, some from... Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, of course, with Sherlock Holmes. There's there's the Christmas Carol. There's there's all kinds of stuff. So again, read. It's important. Catch you guys on the flip side.